pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Amen. We glorify your name. Amen. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. You are the reason for our celebration today. Amen. We thank you for coming in human form. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your only begotten Son. Amen. We are here, Heavenly Father. Talk to our hearts as this celebration Amen. with the children goes on. Talk to us, Heavenly Father, Amen. that we may reflect upon our lives. Amen. Father God, that you will save, you will sanctify, Amen. you will baptize, Amen. you will heal, Amen. you will restore us, Heavenly Father, through this, Father God, the children's program. We thank you, Jesus. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, we welcome you. Uh, we're going to start the prelude with playing the try a prize win and the children also will sing for us <laughs>
Christ was on this wise when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 1 verse 18. conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 7 verse 14. A child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Oh 
and, and the world was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. First, first John chapter 1 verse 14. Amen. Right, 
So we are going to the second part of the program. And this is going to be a short prayer. Please, please, please let us watch Kim flee uh, because there's going to be a question to ask at the end of the day. Yes, we are going to ask ourselves a question after this short play. May the Lord bless us Amen. and make today a special day for us indeed. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. But before the, the, uh, the play starts, the brass wind, they would like to give us just something short, something brief, just before they play. God bless you. Christmas play. Uh, Merry Christmas once again and I hope you're enjoying yourself so far. Um, so in the short play that we have ahead of us, we have three main characters, Christopher, Alistair and James. So as you watch their story, each of them will be depicting three characters from the traditional Christmas story. So either Mary and Joseph, the wise men, or Herod and the scribes and Pharisees. Like we heard before, we'll be asking ourselves a question today, which is, how do we respond to God's call? Now, these three groups of people that I've just mentioned, Mary and Joseph, the wise men, and Herod and the scribes and Pharisees, they all responded to the, res to responded to the birth of Christ in different ways. And it, we're going to see how they responded and how, they can be, how that can be um, translated to our modern times today. So, our three characters, Christopher, Alistair and James, in our first scene, are um, having a dinner after their graduation. Well, having a drink, basically, in the school cafeteria. So we open on their graduation day, whilst they're discussing what they're going to do in the future. So guys, you know, we're finally here. We've all graduated first class. Somehow. You know, yeah. some of us, we don't know what they were doing for the whole of the three years that we were here, but you know, yeah. we're all here now. The world is our oyster. What are you guys planning to do now? Well, uh, experience yeah. looks quite good. Um, 
<laughs> business qualification. I've got everything to be honest. Graduated first class. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you guys know I want to be a business consultant, so yeah, I should yeah. definitely get the job. Like a, a job leading on to that within a few years. So yeah, yeah. definitely. Good. What about you? What about you, Ali? Well. My dad is one of the richest men in the country, yeah, so um, yeah, recently. Yeah. I think it's just best I go home and spend some of dad's That's dollar. Really, yeah. yeah, fair enough. Why not? Anyways, um, enough of news. Mm -hmm. right. Give me a moment. <laughs> I have an announcement. You guys remember Hannah, right? <coughs> Hannah. Hannah, yes. Did Hannah. you just say Hannah? No, let me finish, let me finish. Yeah, let me land, let me land. So, um, last night, uh -huh. I proposed and she finally said yes. You know? What time was this? Yeah. Wait, it was, you he, know, said, he said this like five times before. This, I'm telling the truth this time, like dinner on the ring, you know, everything, the mm, whole Fair you know. enough, fair yeah. enough. So you guys are definitely invited to the wedding. I'll yeah. be best man. Of Why course. not, if not? <clears throat> Anyways, <laughs> to success. And happiness. And happiness. Oh. <laughs> Lovely. Fantastic. So, as we can see from this, these three are very good friends in real life and also in the play. So, um, although they were really, really good friends, they didn't actually really keep in contact. They all went their separate ways and lived their separate lives. And as we heard from there, Alistair on the far end had um, a rich dad, a billionaire, so he just had to go home and, you know, go into the family business, spend dad's money and just be comfortable. Um, the other two didn't have it so easy. Um, in the middle we had James who said he was going to get married to a girl called Hannah who we'll see later on in the play. So they went on and started their family. And we also have Chris on this end who said he had everything he needed to be a business consultant. So all he needed to do was go and look for the jobs and hopefully they'll be coming quite easily. Um, but obviously real life hit them. And um, now, six years later, after their graduation, we want to see how one of them is doing. So we want to see how Alistair's doing at the moment, who's the rich guy's dad. Um, so his father, Dr. Clark, happens to have an annual salary, an annual salary of about six billion pounds. Yeah. So um, he's quite comfortable, right? Many businesses, many companies he runs. So everything's all right. He's got everything he needs. But... One thing we don't know is that he has been suffering from prostate cancer for the past seven months. And in our next scene, we're going to see his last words. We're going to hear his last words to his son, Alistair. And let's think about all those, you know, riches and companies and everything he has. Let's see what he actually thinks of them on this day as he's talking to Alistair, his son. So here, we're going to see Dr. Clark in our next scene on his final mile. <laughs> Throughout my life, I've gained and conquered. I gained millions by the second. Jeez. I gave millions by the yeah. second. Jeez. I've neglected one thing in life. I feel so empty, like if a void is inside me. Dad, no. You have a good, good life. You have a lot of businesses, a lot of money. Alistair, <coughs> listen to me. My businesses, it all means nothing to me. Dad, no. You can't say this. No. Alistair, I've never really discovered the true meaning of life. What do you mean? But when I die, you must find out. Dad, no. Take care you of your a mother. Good life. You're a good man. Take care of your business. Dad, no. Dad? Dad, Dad, no, Dad, come back, Dad, doctor, doctor, come quick. Try and calm down, try and calm down, please. Okay, I'm, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry. We knew it was coming, but your father's passed away. I'm sorry. No, Dr. Clark, my dad, billionaire, what am I to do now? He's gone, and this is the Christmas season. Oh, where's the hope of this season? Where's the light? Oh, the man who raised me, the strong man I saw, and now he's dead. Oh, what am I to do? Oh, what am I to do? So, as we heard, <clears throat> Alice's father died at Christmas time. So there wasn't really anything for him to celebrate. 
yes, his dad left him all his wealth, his billions of pounds, his companies to look after, and everything. So he had life comfortable. Everything he needed materially was there. But in reality, like he just said, there was nothing for him to properly hold on to and say, yes, this is my reason for living. Because his father said all his businesses and all his money was worth nothing. And that's all, that's the only th stuff that he passed on to Alistair, his son. So now Alistair, in deep, deep sorrow and grief, goes on to look for something that he can actually hold on to in life. Something called hope. Now, in our next scene, we're going to go to our next character, Christopher, who um, has not had it so easy after six years of looking for a job as a business consultant. Actually, he's not a business consultant. He's a street cleaner right now. Um, because, obviously, six years of unemployment, come on, you have to do something with your life. You have to, you know, support yourself somehow, pay the bills. So he went with what was available. And uh, so now he's a street cleaner, not very proud of it, but he's doing what he can. Um, so much like you and me, Chris has been a church boy ever since he was young. Went to Sunday school and well, the whole lot. So um, during those six years of unemployment, God revealed to himself to Chris in a different way, in a real way, so that Chris could actually hold on to God and say, yes, I've got God as my anchor in this time of you know, need, of employment. So now Chris, as a Christian, but unemployed properly, un um, unemployed, as in hasn't got a real job, he um, goes about his work cleaning the streets, but he also holds Bible studies at his home every week. And he advertises these Bible studies, giving out posters, or as we might know them, tracts. Um, so in our next scene, we're going to see Chris giving out these posters and um, spreading the good news to the people in Ashbury. So here he is. Oh, come to Bible study, please. Thank you. Chris! Chris, I've missed a day since you. Hannah, oh my days. Yo, how are you? It's been I'm fine, thank you. It's been a long time. How was um, James and everyone? Yeah, we just moved into the neighborhood yesterday. You've got a little one as well? I know, she's just five years old. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> um, how's, how's life and everything? Oh, it's wonderful. We're just unpacking and everything. Oh, oh yeah, you knew her. Um, I should show you guys around. Oh, that would be lovely, but, you know, we need to finish with the housework and everything. So. Oh, it's really stressful. Yeah. Um, well, I've got Bible studies at my place. If wow. you'd like to come, that'd be great. That would be lovely. Lovely. Um, could you bring James along as well? Um, yeah, I'll tell him about it, but I'm not sure. There's kind of like difficulties and everything. So. Ah, I see. Um, I'll keep him my prayers. Oh, okay, thank All you. Right. It was lovely seeing you again. Uh, wait for me. So now, Christopher, after seeing Hannah and inviting her to his next Bible study, Chris is now on his way home, where he expects a visit from his mother. <sighs> Here is it. It's your mother. Oh. <laughs> How is my favorite son? I'm, I'm your only son, <laughs> mom. Jeez. No, this God is too much for me. <laughs> Do you want to see you? Ah, yes, so quick, quick. Please, quick. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. How have you been? Not bad, not bad. Just sustaining myself, I guess. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, so, uh, um, darling, is that a Saint Spring's value tea bag? Yeah. <laughs> you mean you're using Saint Spring's value for your mother? <laughs> if it's what I have, then it's what I'm, what I'm able to give you. Wait, <laughs> I'm confused. So, does this mean to tell me that you are you are still working as a bin man? Cleaning the streets. Is that all you, all you can afford? <sighs> Mom, yes, I'm still working as a bin man. I've not been successful in the recent years. You've not been successful? Yes. Did I not pay for your university? Yeah, and you saw a child. 9,000 a year? Mm. Per year? And this is what you have become? 
Jesus. Mom, you can see I'm trying. I'm not trying. You saw me. You saw me trying throughout those three years of uni. Try, and yeah. trying has led you to do. No, I got man. first class. That's what I'm able to do. Now I'm sending CVs, getting interviews. Not. Just leave that one. Oh, you know, goodness. me and your dad, we suffered in Nigeria to bring you here to you and your siblings. And look, look, this is this is business consultancy uh, qualification. Bin man. <laughs> is he not? I'm going on like I'm not trying, I'm just, it's not, I don't appreciate it right now. You know that name that we've named you? Yes, I named my name, man. Oluwa Bukumi Abisade! Oluwa Bukumi! The Lord has blessed me. Where is your blessing? I've got a house. I'm still living. Abisade, born with a crown. Born is royalty. And the king should now become the servant. Mm -hmm. You should be walking on the streets like servants. Is it? Is it? Eh? Someone's got to do it. Oh, wow, Jesus. Not... Is this how you want to look after me when I'm old? We stay in value. Yeah, well, in the future, I'll have a job, <laughs> innit? Mom, do you want your tea or not? Not even pitchy tea, successfully. Just stay in value. Do you want your tea or not? <laughs> I can't take that one. I can't. <laughs> it's not me. Me, I'm a doctor. I don't have any problem, but you. <laughs> Jesus, have mercy. Me, I'm going. Stupid Jesus of Christ. Why can't such a child be doing this to my life? Gosh. This always happens, man. Every time. I have a problem, I tell her she makes it worse. And God, like, real talk, I've got a job. I mean, I need a job. Like, I need a proper one. A bin man isn't. I've got a first class, man. I've got everything I need. Just show me the bigger picture, please. So now we can see, obviously, Chris is very discouraged. Um, after his mother, someone he's supposed to look up to, and who does really love him, um, comes and obviously sees it in a different way, that he's not really trying. And um, he's obviously discouraged also because he's been looking to God, looking to God and trusting him, trusting him that he will give him a job for six years and nothing has happened. Isn't that really discouraging? I mean, if you've been in this situation before, you would know how Chris is feeling. Um, but as we heard, he was praying to God and asking God to give him the bigger picture. And we know that God always has a plan for us. And after discouragement, always comes encouragement. Um, so in our next bit that we're going to see, um, Alistair, who has just lost his father, as we saw in our other scene, has been going around looking for something, looking for hope. And he's come across Chris's posters advertising the hope of Christmas, which is um, the title of his next Bible study. So Alistair sees hope and he's like, wait, this is what I've been looking for. Can you actually tell me that there's hope after I've lost my father? And now he sees that it's actually Chris that is holding these Bible studies, his old university friend. He's like, okay, let me pay him a visit and see what he's actually talking about. Let's see what this hope is really about. So here we see Alistair coming to pay Chris a visit. Who is it? Irvin, it's Alistair. What? <laughs> Ali, yo! Yes, oh, it's been a long time. Yeah, very How'd you very find my house? Well, I saw your posters in it and um, they brought me here. They really <laughs> called it Vinny. It's nice to know they're actually reaching people. Um, yeah, no, like, how do you, like, what's, like, what's up? Like, how's, like, life been lately and everything? Oh, well, it's been tough, man, recently. Damn. Like, um, like I said, your posters hit me, like, I've been feeling very hopeless of late. Like, my dad died not too long ago. Mr. Clark, billionaire Mr. Clark. Yeah, my dad. Dad of cancer. And, um, he left me telling me that, saying his businesses, all his fame, everything that he made in his life, that it was all worthless, that it was all for nothing, and that I should look for something better. And that left me confused. I thought all there was to gain in life was just money. And then I saw your post about hope, about this Christmas season, I was like, maybe this can help me. And it's my friend Chris from university, definitely him, he can teach me. And that's why I'm here. Well, I'm so sorry to hear about your dad, Chris. Um... I don't know what to say, to be honest. Uh, when you say you're feeling hopeless, <laughs> it's not exactly the correct spirit for Christmas season, isn't it? Um, Christmas is for hope in terms of like its whole meaning. The, the birth of Christ and he came down to give us hope. And all, like, all, the, 
all the, the, the world was in darkness before that, and he came to bring the world light, hope, like worth that everyone tell, for everyone to have that chance to, I don't know, like see the bigger picture of life and reach out to Christ. And let me get my Bible here. Um, what do I have to do exactly to, to get this hope? You just need to have faith and like kneel down on your knees, pray, tell God all the things you've done, ask him for forgiveness, ask him to fill you with that hope and all that. All the, all, the, all the things that you're feeling, tell them and just really let it out to them and I to guarantee it will help you, will make you feel different. Wait, one sec, let me just open to you. What's this? Bible, one sec. John 3.16, alright, cool. It says here, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that we serve, believe in him, should not perish by everlasting life. That's all you need to do, believe and know that and believe and pray and just, I guarantee you'll give it to you. Yeah, why not? Why not? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Oh wow, Chris, this, this is amazing. The feeling, it's, it's indescribable. I really feel the hope of this season now. And now I see what everybody's talking about. Wow. Um, this is my Bible says I'm asking like, tomorrow, actually. So Thank if you came over, that'd be great. Just yeah, I will definitely. Learn Thank more you, and stuff. Be early Thank as you used to be. As well, as you used... I'll see you, man. In a bit. <sighs> this is great. So what an encouraging day it is for Chris and also for Alistair, <laughs> who has now found hope back into his life. Um, so in our next scene, we have um, our character, our last character from the um, graduation. Anyone remember his name? Yeah, so we've got James. Um, so he started a family with Hannah, who we saw in scene two. So Hannah got, um, they've got a baby now, well, not a baby, a five-year-old daughter, and they've started their own family. Um, what we don't know about this family is that they go to church every Sunday. Hannah's a Christian. Um, but James hasn't actually followed that same path. Yes, he goes to church and he hears about the love of God every single Sunday. Um, but they've had some difficulties as a couple. And James is not really gripping, he's not really um, making the message of salvation his own. So in our next scene, we're going to see what their home is like on a normal daily basis. We're going to see James and Hannah and their little child, Grace, um, in their home. Here, let's see how they get on in everyday life. So put this in the kitchen for me, okay? <sighs> yeah, make sure you put it in the kitchen. Yeah, there you go. <sighs> uh, all of this. James? James, didn't I tell you to stop drinking? <sighs> James, please, can you stop drinking? We Look, came to this new house for a new beginning, and you're still drinking, James. Uh, what do you call yourself? Hen, he, Han, Hannah. This is a party of two. Me, this one, and stop. drink two. We have a you child, are James. Not Look, we have here. a child. Look, please. What's, can you yeah, um, Thank you. Yeah, clear off. Hannah, take, take, take a seat. This take can't seat. be happening, James. Take, take a seat. Yeah. That, that your job have moved us to this place and they even disguised it as promotion. James, they, they were look at the state look, of you. Why, you why, need to change, why, James. Why this you, can't be happening all the time. I saw Chris the other day. He's why? got like a Bible study. He's okay, saved. Okay, wait, look, wait, we wait, have wait, to get wait, saved together. Let, okay, you want me to jump for joy? Let me jump for <laughs> James, look at you. Let, wait, um... 
now that they have moved you here, have they called you for job? No. Have that little one that's walking that's up why we those should be about have it. they found have they, about have they found school for her? No. That little job that I found over time this over time that now I want to come back and I want to relax with this my co- you, tr- no, my trusty companion here and you want to disturb me please don't make noise this night just what you always no. say every night James were, were you were you there when I was struggling doing that overtime in that place there that our boss is very useless and he's very wicked that's why we if, should pray James can this you, has can, to stop sh- 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 when we don't meet deadlines. He withholds one. He withholds our pay. Don't worry, the government will catch him. James, it has to stop. Look, I'm I'm going back out there. James, you can't and go back if, to the pub again. If if you try and stop me, this bottle will be on your head. Okay. James, please don't, don't go. Don't touch James, me. please. Jesus, 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 why? The point from that scene is, you could probably guess that in our, um, our, our character, James, is supposed to portray the character and the attitude of Herod and the scribes and Pharisees in our traditional Christmas story, who heard the word of God and who knew the word of God but didn't do anything la- about it. And as a result, they became just bitter people. Even as you see the scribes and Pharisees, what they did to Jesus, they were bitter people. And as we can see from this scene, James has become quite bitter, hearing the word of God all the time, but blocking his heart to it makes him bitter. And the lesson we want to learn from that is that every time we come to church, every time we hear the word of God, whether it's on a sermon on YouTube or any place, anyhow we hear the word of God, whenever God talks to us, we cannot just block our hearts to it and do nothing with it because it doesn't do anything but make us more and more bitter. So in our next scene, we're going to see, we're going to hear... We're going to watch the Bible study that we've all been hearing about. The Bible study titled The Hope of Christmas, which Chris Abisade is going to um, conduct with all the people of Ashbury, the people in his city. So here he talks about the good news of Jesus Christ. And he's had a problem. They've had a problem in that community. They are huddling in his house, but the numbers grow every single week and there's not enough space to accommodate them. But as Chris is, he takes this to God in prayer and he asks God to intervene for him because he has no money to buy a church. But he's trusting God that there will be a way for them to get a church for the community of Ashbury to worship him um, properly. So here, let's see what the Bible study scene is like. Who is it? It's me. It's Alistair. Yeah, Chris. Early as usual. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, just sit down somewhere. Oh, sure. People will be, they'll be like filtering in later. <sighs> How's your week, man? Okay, I think I should be tired. <laughs> Stressful, but yeah, that's all right, not too bad. Yep, yeah, these are more people. Chris, <laughs> lovely to see you. Um, did James make it? Um, no, he's not coming today. Uh, I see. Um, well, there's always next week. Hannah. You remember Hello. Ali from uni? Wow. That you? Wow, it's been a long time. Know, right? It's nice to see you again. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, late. Oh, it's all right. It's not too bad. Uh, yeah, not that late, so it's all right. Just sit down somewhere, nice find a seat. She, she just leave the door open for everyone to come in. Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. Just filter in and... Um, yeah, sorry about this cramped up space. We have more people here today. Um, well, if we could stand up and get started then. Uh, Hannah, if you'd like to pray for us. Yes, I would. Um, Jesus, thank you for bringing us here today. Mm. Please help us in this Bible study. Please mm. help us to learn and gain from this opportunity. In mm. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, I want to um, start off with reading from Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Isaiah actually chapter 9, sorry. Isaiah chapter 9. Okay, if someone could start reading from verse 2. Okay. 
The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They dwell in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them have the light shined. Thank you. Um, so I now could read verse 4. Verse 4. Oh, Lord. For the yoke of the Jordan and the stars of the Holy Shogun, the rod of Okay, um, Hannah, could you read verses 6 and 7 as well? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Okay, now from what we read in verse 2, what could we say the state of the earth was, of the world was in before Christ came? Uh, hopeless. Um, yeah, and would you like to say anything? In darkness. Thank you. Um, okay, now <clears throat> it also says, have seen a great light. Who would we say that light is? Um, Jesus. Correct. Um, okay, now, <clears throat> it also says, um, okay, I've seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them have the light shined. So it's just there saying that everyone that in, dark, in darkness will have received this light. So this is to everyone, not just a certain amount of people. It's for everyone in the world. Um, also, why do you think, why do, you, um, do you think we deserve this hope and this light that Christ has given us? No, we didn't deserve it because we were born into sin. But God saw it fit that he would send his son to die for us. Precisely. And if we could read from John chapter 3, verse 16. Um, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I really like this verse here because it just <clears throat> reiterates to us how much love God has for us and the fact that we don't deserve his grace and to have received his only son, but God loves us so much that he's able to do that for us and um, give him to us. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to say on that verse specifically? Um, I would like to say just as a whole that I personally, I was experiencing a very bad time before I met you, Chris, once again. And um, I was hopeless, as they said earlier in Isaiah, and I was lost in darkness. And then when I met you again, you showed me the light. You brought me to this, to this, to this, to this religion and to this Christ that we now learn about. And I now see the true meaning of Christmas. And it's very, I don't even know the words to say. Eye-opening. Yeah, eye-opening that this has happened. And I just want to thank you and ultimately thank God on high because this is all possible because of him. All right, well, that's great, Ali. Um, if we could also read Psalm 33, verse 22, just to end, because we are running on time. I want to read Psalm 33 verse 22. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. Okay, if we could just have that prayers in our minds throughout the week and for God's mercy to be upon us because we've already read in John 3 16 about how much he loves us and yeah. Um, if we could round up today and just stand up and say the grace and we'll continue next week. Um, three, two, one, go. The grace for Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Okay, well, that'll be all today. Um, we've got some next week, so if you could be, try to be on time next week as well, yeah, that'd nice be lovely. Nice meeting, meet all of you. Um, yeah. Oh. Thank you so much for this um, Bible study. I'm oh. very, very, very blessed. That's great. Um, thank you. That's nice you're welcome. You. Um, if you could try to bring James along next week as well, that'd be um, great. Yes, that'll, I'll try. Thank you. All right. How do you find it? Well, to be honest, Chris, this is a very great community you have here. Like, the fellowship is, is, is swell. Yeah, I'm lucky to have them. But I it's one thing. It's, it's very crowded and cramped in your space. Not no offence. Yeah, I've, I've had that problem for a while now. Um, yeah, I've had my eyes on the church, which is, of course, much bigger. But, you know, <laughs> money's an issue right now. I've tried to be saving up. You know, up. If, it's, if it's money, I'll pay for it. You I'll pay for the church. Chris, a church is a lot of money. I know. You being serious? I'm sure. You'll buy a church for me. I'll buy the church. Not well, for, for you. The, for people of Ashby. For the people of Ashby. Fair yeah. enough. Um, <laughs> I still can't believe it, man. But he's going to run the church and stuff. Chris, 
You know your job. This is your new job, to be pastor, to run the church. Don't you think this is what God has been leading up to? We've not given you this high executive job that would keep you from his work? Fair enough, that's so true. I've never seen it like that. Nah, Chris, come on, man. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, that's great. Um, well, we could, yeah, to probably like next week. Pray about it though first. Yeah, I will, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll check out next week and yeah, sure. hopefully buy the church. Yeah, we will buy the church, don't we worry. We will buy the church. For the people of Ashbury. Yeah, I know that. We'd like to thank you. We have come to the end of our program. Do you enjoy it? Yes. We thank God for the little that we have been able to do. We are trusting that the Spirit of God himself will speak to you more than we have. But before I left earlier on, I said we are going to, we are going to do something. Who remember? Ah. So we have to pray. Wow. God bless you, sir. So we have two things. Yes? Maybe we should sort out the question first, and then we go and pray. Yeah, this play, this short play is just all about the hope of Christmas. The word hope stands for waiting for, looking for, desiring. So what is Christmas hope? We know Christmas is all about the birth of Christ. Now, joining it with hope. So what's the hope? Why, why do we need hope for the birth of Jesus Christ? We don't need to go anywhere. Thank you, Tina. God bless you. Tina, you want to say something? God bless you. Hope of eternal life. God bless you. That's, that's where we're going. That's the essence of what all what we have been doing. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's the reason why we are celebrating Christmas. Jesus Christ coming into this world to save us from sin, to redeem us so that we can have eternal life. So the question to you, even then before the question, from the play, we try to debate three major characters at the birth of Christ. James, he represents King Herod, who did not believe in the birth of Christ. In actual fact, he did contrary. He wanted to kill him. But it didn't succeed. So sinners celebrating Christmas blindly, they are without hope. They are without the hope of Christmas. They are just celebrating eating and drinking. It's not all about eating and drinking. We have to have that hope. Yes. That's one person. Chris represents Joseph and Mary. Though he was very poor, like Mary and Joseph, they were poor. But God used them in bringing that hope to humankind. We are reading about them today. They are the vehicle that the Lord used to bring the hope to us. We bless God for it. Amen. And the last character, depicted by Alistair, the young rich man who gave his wealth. Have you have that hope? Now surrender that hope to the Lord. He represents the wise men. They were rich, but still they came before the Lord, before baby Jesus, and surrendered. They worshiped him and gave him their gifts. So it doesn't matter whether you are poor, you are not significant, or you are rich. The salvation is for everyone. It's for all. Jesus says, come unto me. All, all, all. So but the question is, as you are sitting there, 
as we are standing here, do you have that hope of hope of Christmas? That's where we're going. Can you sincerely say, yes, I have the hope of Christmas? Can I put my hand on my chest and yes, I have the hope of Christmas? That is the reason why we have to go and pray. If we have that hope, glory be to God. We can go back on our knees and praise him. And thank him that Jesus, thank you for that hope that you have given me. But if you fall into the path of Herod and sinners who are celebrating blindly, you know, there's room for you this morning, this afternoon, to come to the Lord and tell him, Lord Jesus, I want that hope. I want my name to be written in the book of life. For that's the purpose why which Jesus came. He was manifested to destroy the work of the devil. He's able to save us Amen. from now till glory. Amen. When we see him, we are celebrating him now as baby Jesus. <coughs> but he's coming back Amen. as a king. Amen. Do you want to partake? Do you want him? There's room for us today to tell him that, Lord, everything I have, I give unto you. So we are going to sing this song once again, solemnly telling Jesus Christ, the King of glory, our Savior, our Lord, our Master, our Holy Lord, that we are surrendering our life to him. We are giving all to him. Let him have his way. Let his kingdom be established in our lives so that we will go out there and be light of the world. Through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Please, you can join us by standing up and coming to the altar. from their life of sin. Jesus, Lord, as we are going on our knees this, this morning, Lord, we pray that uh, you come and minister to us. Let us go home with the joy of Christmas in our hearts. Bless everyone today, Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.